This is Mark with Alaska Outdoor Adventures. Today we're fishing in the salt. We're fly fishing for black rockfish or rockfish in general, um, ling cod and halibut. I'm on the efficiency. The efficiency belongs to that guy. He's not a guide. He just, uh, for some reason, lets me fish on his boat. Probably because I taught him everything he knows about saltwater fly fishing. And I tie him his flies. And I make the fly lines. But other than that, he does some stuff like he owns the boat. Say hi, Rick. Hi, Rick. So today we're what about two hours north of Sitka in some undisclosed waters. We're just what are we like three quarters of a mile from the cabin, Rick? Uh, a little more than about two and a half, three. Two and a half, three miles from the cabin. And that's Chichagoff Island over there. Clag Island. And there's the Fairweather Mountains. We Way over there, you can just see those white mountains in the mist. And we're starting our second drift of the day. The first drift, we drifted for two hours. We went almost a mile and a half, which gives us an average drift speed of about three quarters of a mile per hour. And it was all fishable waters. And um, so, what we do is we find a place to drift where the wind and the currents will work together to give us a slow enough drift that we can fly fish according to IGFA rules so we're not using downriggers we're not using any artificial weight of any kind we do tie our own fly lines that get that uh, enable us to get down deep where the fish are down and Rick's going to show us the technique. So what he's doing is he's casting toward our drift. You noticed he casted into his back cast actually and that was his cast so the boat is actually drifting in that direction and as he drifts in that direction as we drift in that direction the fly lines that we tie allow that fly to sink straight down like a pencil as we travel over top of it. So ideally the goal is to get that fly down to just above the structure which right now you can see is 110 feet down. We're moving at a rate of about 0.45 points, you know, you can see the speed there, miles per hour. And so he's going to strip out line, and he can strip out as much as 120 feet, according to IGFA rules. And the way we have the fly line set up is we have 30 feet of T20 and 90 feet of T17 sinking line. It's the fastest rate sinking line we can get, and it's a balanced line, which means that the tip, the heaviest part, is going to sink the fastest so that we don't have a big belly in our line, which is going to cause us problems. The fly would actually be higher than the fly line. So he's about almost, oh, he's already got a fish on. You got a fish? No. Nope. nope. Okay, so we're starting our second drift, and... Um, when some more exciting things happen, we'll check back in with you.
and we're fishing with a fly. He's fishing with a fly that we call a uh, non-pelagic squid. It's a variation of that fly that, that I developed years and years ago. How many years we've been doing this? Like, we were trying to figure it out. Like six years. We've been fly fishing out here catching as many different species of rockfish and ling cod and halibut as we can and other things and uh, I'll show you what I'm using today that's my oh he's got one let me come over here of course you're right in the sun so we've got glare and we've got everything else wow that fish is bending that 10 weight pretty good of course, it doesn't take much fish to bend a 10 weight in the ocean. We have broken several 10 weight fly rods doing this. And we're, in the early days, we broke plenty. We've been getting better at it, keeping our equipment intact. We're, uh, Drifting in 63, no, I'm sorry, in 86 feet of water over a whole field of structure. There's a bunch of little sunken mounts down here. And we're moving at 0.57 feet per minute per hour, feet per hour. 0.57 feet per minute would be pretty fast. So a half a foot per, half a mile an hour is what we're doing. And there's a, another black rockfish. And he's got the fly swallowed quite deep, but you can see the fly in there. And here's the, here's the technique we use. We get the fish, he goes into the bleeding bucket, and then we, we knock him out. Those rockfish have spines all over them that are quite sharp and they cause infections. I don't know what's, what kind of bacteria is on there, but they cause infections. So you gotta be careful you don't get spiked by them or your hands will be all bruised and infected by the end of the fishing trip. We're gonna be out here eight lovely days. And so then we cut the gills to bleed them. They go into the bleeding bucket. They bleed there for 10, 15 minutes. And then they go into this cooler here on ice within, certainly within a half hour of them getting caught. They're getting chilled. Show us that fly. So that fly is an imitation of a squid and we fish it near the bottom so we call it a non-pelagic squid that one has a rubber head on it and some feathers white is the color of choice and that's Rick's favorite fly to fish with he fishes with that primarily thanks Rick for showing us how to do it and then this is what I'm fishing with today to start with I have four fly rods with me four different reels and lots of flies this is my this is a happens to be a Cabela's nine weight and the only reason I'm using a Cabela's nine weight is because I got tired of breaking sage ten weights so I started getting fly rods at garage sales so since I started using inexpensive rods for this I quit breaking them as soon as I start using expensive rods again, for sure I'll start breaking them again. And this reel is a really nice reel. This is the Tybor Gulf Stream. Your name here. It's the Tybor Reel by Ted Jurassic. Another black rock. So we're allowed five each on this trip per day. Plus we're fishing, we're each fishing a proxy. And what that means is, is we know some old folks that don't get to go out fishing. 
but they still like to eat fish and it's a major part of our food gathering every year is to go fishing like this and so we gather fish for our freezers and not only that but we gather fish for the freezers of some older folks that don't get to come out and do this because it is actually quite rigorous it's a uh, it's tough fishing not like today there's number three black rock that one was a dandy and then uh, so what happens after we get all these fish we'll get our limit or we'll get what we think we should have for a day they all go into that cooler and get chilled immediately as soon as we hit the beach before we do anything else they all get cleaned and then they go to the vac we vacuum pack them right on site here at camp and they go right into the freezer and they'll be frozen by the next morning and then we go fishing again the next day and so let me go back to since we were interrupted when I was describing our tackle the fly I'm using today as mentioned as I mentioned who's using the fly? you're just talking the fly I will be using today will be this fly here so Rick is content to catch puny little fish like them black rocks to fill the cooler feed people I'm trying I'm targeting halibut ling cod and so what this is is a tiger rockfish imitation and so when you're using that uh, non-pelagic squid the black rockfish just eat that up and generally you catch a black rockfish before you you give a chance for a halibut or a lingcod to get on your line. The black rockfish just don't leave it alone. However, the rockfish just swim with this fly. This fly imitates those rockfish. This is a tiger rockfish imitation. And I have video of them just swimming right alongside of it, just being part of the school. And so what that does is it allows for bigger game fish to eat it before a rockfish it eats it. Now I will catch rockfish on this fly too, but not as many as what Rick will catch. This is targeted, this is for targeting bigger game fish. So anyway, we're gonna check back with you later when more exciting stuff happens. And uh, so we'll talk to you later. What are you doing, Rick? Catching a fish. Catching another fish? About 30 feet out. On this dang fly rod? How do we know it was 30 feet out? Well, because that's where the... The heavy fly rod ends. Yeah. What is it? Oh, it's a black rockfish, but it's not a huge one. It is a black rockfish. Nice one, though. Nice blacks. These are sure good eating. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
Another one is going to get his gills cut. Go in the cooler. See now that's not a bad black rock fish right there. Yeah, I can keep that one. Oh, I'd keep him. That's a uh, exceptional table fare there. Yeah, I think we ought to move that bleeding bucket so I don't have to look at your ass every time. Got a double, although I'm not sure we can call yours much of a fish. Whoa! I think mine could probably eat yours. It's coming in pretty easy now, though. Much bigger than yours. A little bit though. Do you hear that a lot? That yours is not big enough? Something is uh, bending his pole no more than normal this time. Most of the time he likes to catch them real little fish, but this one seems a little bigger. We've really got 30 feet away. Yep. Have a look. It's a big black rock fish.
That's a nice one there. Right, five pounds, huh? One knock on the head with all the respect in the world. And remove the hook. I said remove the hook. for the freezer. If we'd been fishing conventional, we'd have, re we'd have our limit of black rocks already and we'd probably have close to a limit of non-pelagic rockfish, which would mean our day of fishing would be over. Or we'd be staying out here just to try and catch a few lingcod, which we do. We would do that hunting for just ling cod, but we end up letting an awful lot of other fish go. It's just a lot more fun to add the challenge of this fly fishing to it and fish longer and enjoy the time out here. When you're just meat hunting, it seems a little less enjoyable. It fills the freezer, just not as much fun. You got one on already? on the conehead non-pelagic squid. Is that bottom? Well, that's a nice fish. Cheaper sleepers, man. Wait, you can't catch fish like that fly fishing in the salt water. They don't do that. Oh man, he's taking out line. Huh? I'm trying to fish. I see that. Let me get mine out of the way. Well that's yeah, let me just get you. So you're gonna gaff it well no matter what happens. So you decide how you wanna do this. Well, regardless of what it is, you're gaffing it. I don't give a well, I'm, well, and you're harpooning it, too. I'm going to back up so I can film. Keeps shaking his head. What the hell are you doing, Rick? Well, I can guarantee you this is the biggest fish of the day when, when, when and if we get it in the boat. Well, here's the thing. If it's a record book fish, and we are according to all IAGFA rules, I can't take the rod. So, I'm gonna have to gaff it, depending on what it is. It is a lingcod. No, it's a halibut. But it's not a, it's not a harpoonable halibut. He's not ready yet, is he? Uh, he's, he's, he's <laughs> I, I don't dare touch that. <laughs> don't touch it. No, don't touch it. I mean, you could tighten your drag one click if you wanted. Oh, he, he went all the way to my back. You mean we got to go through this all again? <laughs> so he's what, 120, 30, 40 feet out again? Okay, there's 30 feet. Two minutes of can of battery left. I don't care about the camera. I do. I want to get this on video. Anybody can catch a damn fish. 
But not anybody can get it on video, you know. Get ready to gaff this fish. Can I just get one video yeah, of him? That son of a bitch is a harpooner. Hey, I'm okay. serious. I know, no. it is, okay. Well, we're done. All right, let me get the harpoon. I hope so. See that big tear in his skin is a little worrisome to me. But the cable's been moving around. Bleeding. Beat him. In the boat. Did you get that on video? This halibut is bigger than the halibut you caught on a fly rod. Thank you for the help. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for the help. <laughs> we don't want to touch the fish, do we? Yeah, we can wash it. 56. We'll put it right down on there so we make sure it's accurate. 57. 57. And so let's get the guy tied book. 92 pounds. <laughs> 92 pounds. 92 pounds. Very cool. So 57 inches? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the same size as the one that I caught with that lure that I made. Okay, it's day number two. We have three non-pelagics, 20 pelagics, two lingcod. How's the day, Rick? It was a great day. Today was a great day. We great day. caught everything on fly rod. fly rod today. And yesterday. And yesterday. Some nice rockfish there. Some nice lingcod. How many black rocks have you done, or how many fish have you done this season, Rick? Oh, I don't know. Hundreds and hundreds, I'll tell you. This is your 50th day spent at the cabin this summer. Yep. If we assume you guys averaged 20 fish a day, that's a thousand. That's a thousand fish. And some times you had bigger parties than just us. Mm -hmm. Most of the time you had bigger parties than just two. So it's a fair assumption that you had probably 20 ro uh, rockfish to clean a day anyway. Or 25. Plus lingcod and halibut and whatever else. So... They get cleaned here, they're chilled, still they're chilled real nice. We just hit the beach from fishing today. And these guys are getting cleaned well before an hour after we hit the beach. I mean, we just hit the beach. And then, so he cleans them. Sometimes I help him clean them when I'm not running a camera. So there's the fillets. They get rinsed and put into this bucket right there and other buckets like it and then from there they go up to the cabin and they get vacuum packed and frozen right away so within an hour they'll be in the freezer okay now we're in the back room at the cabin and we're vacuum packing all this fish 
Go ahead, Rick. Show us how it's done. There goes the vacuum packer. I'm gonna come in, show you how it's done. So when we leave, we'll have all this fish vacuum packed and frozen. The only thing we gotta keep in mind is halibut has to stay in the four quarters in order to put back in the boat and take to town or you have to take the fishing gear out of the boat in goes the rockfish in goes the rockfish push the button and we're going and here's the fish we just got done cleaning you saw us cleaning earlier Prime table fare. Each bag is nicely labeled. Oh yeah, let me see that. See that label? Yep. Perfect. Okay. A small sow brown bear. She's about 35 yards from us. We just got done cleaning fish on the second day of our eight day fishing trip. We're at the cabin, and that's a brown bear right there. on an island just about 250-300 yards from me and that island he had to swim to it it's uh... there's the far bank over there and you see the water and he, uh, what made him go over there on that island, I'm not sure. But there was something that was worth swimming to over there. So. It's an Alaska brown bear. Right off of Ch uh, Chichigoff Island. This is the third day of our fishing, fly fishing trip north of Sitka in the Gulf of Alaska and as you can see the weather is just a little bit different than it has been. The uh, It's drizzling. The seas are what? What do we have? Four foot seas? Yep. Four foot seas. Tonight it's supposed to get really crazy. It's supposed to blow harder like to 20. Right now it's blowing probably gusts of 7 to 10 and later on 20 and is it supposed to get to 30? 40. So probably tomorrow we won't be fishing because that would be silly. Anyway it's too rough out here to fly fish so we're fishing conventional today. As you can see by the rod there, we're fishing in 80 feet of water and we're going to do this for a while until we get tired of getting bounced around.
nicer. Yellow eye. Yep. You sound like a kid that brought home a puppy. That's our last one. We didn't have any time anyway, but looks like we're gonna have time. It's about quarter to two on our third day of fishing the weather's been getting snap nasty it's uh there's a boat out there that's the efficiency it's blowing outside about 25 knots when we got there this morning shortly after we got there this morning it was up to 15 knots and we had four foot seas and we fished till, let's see, we started fishing about 9, fished till one, one quarter after 1, and uh, got almost the limit of everything. We got 18 or 19 pelagic rockfish, 4 non-pelagics, and 3... Lingcod. There's our cooler full in the skiff. So it's wet out here. We're all wet. I'm wet. Rick's dry. And we're gonna go get these fish cleaned and get these fish cleaned. Go in and Spent some time in the warm cabin working on fishing gear, retying some fly lines, and fixing some lures, re putting new hooks on lures. Uh, so I'll give you a, a look around the cabin now. Uh, the other thing we're doing is rehabbing a lot of the lures that we use the conventional fish. So I'm sharpening hooks, um, changing hooks changing hoochie skirts and just doing a triage to see what lures need total rebuild, new powder coating, new eyeballs, new hooks and hoochie skirts. So I'll do that this evening and then uh, give you a look around the cab and that's the dining area where I'm working on the lures. An extra bunk there and then Nice windows so we can see around. And here's the wood box next to the wood stove that keeps us nice and warm. And back there is the bunk room. A bunch of four bunks back there. And over here is the kitchen area. Food is prepared. Dishes are washed. We have indoor plumbing. There's two barrels up in the attic that we fill from the creek and it comes out the spigot right over the sink right there and we heat water on the wood stove or on the propane stove right there we can bake in the oven so anyway that's what it looks like around here 
and so today we're resting just a little bit getting some chores done around the camp this is the front door to the outside Rick's outside taking a shower right now and there's the bunkhouse that's where Rick sleeps and that's where I sleep right there okay we'll check in with you tomorrow it looks like it's gonna be too rough to get out at all tomorrow so it looks like we're gonna be doing lots of chores around here on our fourth day so anyway check back with you later when some exciting stuff happens
we're still hooked up. Let's see though. We're well twisted. Let's go all of them, all and all over to your side. <laughs> yes, sir. That's called a double right there. I guess it's a double. Let's try not to cut the leaders off. There, they're in the bucket. So now we're. Not only that, but they're unconnected in the bucket. Don't ask me how that happened. I know, you want me to hold this one up, right? <laughs> yes. Am I blinking? Am I foggy? I can't tell about that, but you're pointing, <laughs> pointing down at my feet. <laughs> now am I pointed not at your feet? <laughs> productive we can be. different species in a row. If that turns into a good fly, we're going to have to name it. Rick. There we go. Nice mixed bag right there. That's a vermilion rockfish. That is a yellow tail rockfish. That is a copper rockfish. 
and the rest of those in there probably about what nine nine or so rock black rocks and uh, those are four different species of the 30 or so 30 36 species of rockfish that we have in Alaska and of course also in these waters we have halibut ling cod green ling the salmon during the salmon run and that is another that's a quillback rockfish another species of the rockfish family that we have here and that's a non-pelagic rockfish and Rick is not allowed to keep him because he's already caught his two non-pelagic rockfish that he's allowed today with his with his proxy he's allowed one and of course his reg his own fishing license he's allowed one and so these quillbacks they normally go down pretty good by themselves and we don't have to use a deep sea release now they probably should change them quill backs from non-pelagic to pelagic because they release so easy It's like a, almost 11 o'clock we've been doing chores at the cabin because tomorrow we have to go home. Yeah, I'll go back to Sitka. Or I'll go to Sitka. We got to leave here tomorrow the because gonna the weather's going to turn and it's going to be gale force winds on Sunday and 14 foot seas and we don't want to travel in gale force winds and 14 foot seas. So what was supposed to be a seven and a half or eight day fly fishing trip has turned into a four day fly fishing trip. First day, Rick caught a 92 pound halibut at this very spot. And uh, he's been rubbing it in ever since. He thinks he has dethroned me as the fishing magician, which is absurd. And so we fished two days. We lost, actually, we lost two days to bad weather. We did get out 
just long enough on each of those two days to catch enough for dinner and had fish for dinner. Looks like Rick just hooked another fish. The fishing's horrible out here, Rick, isn't it? You know, it's about as bad as I've ever seen it. But, um, so, it's calm enough today. We are able to fly fish. You just saw us. Rick cast his fly and in, in like uh, 30 seconds hooked another fish. We'll see what this is. Today he's using his Ross reel and his 10 weight. After I repaired the tip on his 10 weight, after I stepped on the tip of his 10 weight and broke it. So his, uh, he lost all of his fly gear off of his Temple Fork Outfitters reel. Uh, so we switched to his Ross reel. And so now he's got another fish, and it's another black rock fish. Right like that. That's another good one, Rick. What's going on, Rick? I don't know. Something grabbed it and took off. Oh, you're fishing like 50 feet down in 100 feet of water, 80 feet of water in a school of black rockfish, and all of a sudden, something too big to be a black rockfish bit it. Like he was swimming amongst them. Made three runs so far. Could be just a very big one, you think, or there's a lingcod in there amongst them. Well, we'll know in 30 feet. We'll know in 30 feet. Cut. Here, let me hold your pole and you gaff him, okay? Yeah, give me your pole. Come back up. You don't like it in that bucket, huh? <laughs> he climbed right off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got he blood all over the boat. Well, Rick, our eight-day trip turned into a seven-day trip because we got a storm coming tomorrow. It's supposed to blow gale force winds. We actually, apparently, we got out every day. The first two days we were able to fly fish and we did good. We got limits of rockfish and lingcod. And you caught a really nice halibut you on the first day. You gave us a new record halibut for fly fishing, 92 pounds. That's pretty cool. Then we had to stay, uh, then there was pretty bad weather for three days. We got out each of the three days and caught enough for dinner. Other than that, we um, couldn't fly fish. We had to, we went out for just a couple hours and came back. And then yesterday we were able to fish again, but not with a fly. We fished conventional yesterday, got a limit. And then uh, today we, we were able to fish about half a day with flies. And we got about a half a limit. So there's some rockfish getting cleaned up. I'll show 
our some more of our fish. There's a yellow eye, a couple yellow eyes from today. Got on flies, some more rockfish, copper rockfish, black rockfish. No lings today, no halibut. It was a tough day to find fish today, wasn't it, Rick? It was. Even for you. Even Mark's a-hole wasn't uh, producing very good. And it was a short day, so we didn't even get over to Mark's b-hole. Anyway, it's um, closing of another fantastic trip. And we're always we're already looking forward to next spring. So we could do it again. This is our last trip this fall. Tomorrow we're going to put the boat away for the winter. And next we get ready for fly fishing season, or ice fishing season, I'm afraid. It's not far from us, the ice. Okay. Yeah, Mark, I've, <coughs> I've got a friend who does a lot of ice fishing. And he's never invited he's you never along? Invited me. Never invited you. I think you should probably give him a call, see what the hell is the deal. I just do it on tape. Just 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 now. <laughs> okay, we'll have to see what happens. Well, he's editing this tape. He should remember that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. We'll see. Every time I call you, you're busy. All right. This is Mark with Alaska Outdoor Adventures, closing on another summer fishing season.